watching? I don't know. I'm obsessed with it. People knew me as like the Seinfeld girl, so that clearly meant that I was talking about it like more than other things. Yeah, we never even talked about it like that. I think it was just like, you want to watch Seinfeld? Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I had a really long day, I just needed to hear these four characters blather on and on. Like they were, in a weird way, they kind of felt like my friends. You lose your keys or you can't remember where you parked your car in a parking deck. Everything goes back to that show. The references alone, they happen every single day. You do it subconsciously. Somebody would yell, hey, do you want bread? And we'd right away look at someone, three dollars. <laughs> no soup for you. People are looking at us silly. Like, <laughs> like, all right, those two, OK, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> you got a little problem. Oh, I got a big problem, Jerry. What is a fan, really, is, is the question that you're asking. What makes a fan of a certain show, or a certain genre, or anything? And, and it really is living it. Very good, very good. Excellent, excellent. Okay, all right, here we go. I'm Katie Kleiger, and I just graduated from the University of Minnesota, and I am here now in New York City. Moving to New York? That's fantastic! <laughs> I have the honor and privilege to be a part of a Seinfeld trivia night with my team of misfits that I've put together. Here I am with a bunch of my idiot friends. This is gonna be great! <laughs> We live in Leonia, New Jersey. We're married almost 13 years. We have three beautiful children. We have two dogs, Marissa Tomei and Rochelle Rochelle. Rochelle Rochelle! Rochelle, Rochelle. Oh. What do you think? Our Seinfeld display case is very important to us. I would bet that people have. There's other collectors out there that have, have stuff. some stuff, but I don't know if they have the amount of things we have in there. The giant clown check, we have... That, we still have to find a real good spot yeah. for that. There's no real... That should go above the mantle, but you know, I we know. have our wedding picture there. <laughs> I mean, First day she saw that there actually was trivia. I remember she came home, she was all excited. She was screaming about it. We gotta go to this, it's Seinfeld trivia. I gotta see if we know as much as we think we know. So the first ever one we went to, we wind up winning. Yeah. It was like, wow, I can't believe we won this thing. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. I'm, I'm covered in tattoos, but I would say my favorite is my Seinfeld sleeve. My goal is to get all five signatures tattooed to my arm, just, you know, shake their hand, say thank you for the greatest show ever, and uh, making us all laugh a little more each day. If you're, uh, you got a Seinfeld tattoo, we can be friends. I have one on my leg here. That's a little Jerry with the whiz hat. It's a little bit more, like, not as obvious. Little Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> Name my chicken after you. And then I have one here that is a perfume bottle. You know, I got a great idea for a cologne. It's called The Beach. I can't believe I'm saying this, but that's not a bad idea. <laughs> Tell me about it. And then on the back of my arm, it's a pretzel that says, Smart, these pretzels are making me thirsty. We have posters. We have the Kramer hanging over, the, over our bed. <laughs> um. He is a loathsome, offensive brute, yet I can't look away. We have two dogs. We feel bad when we leave them because they're like our children. So anytime we leave the house, we leave the TV on for them, so at least they feel like they hear something. Mm -hmm. And we always leave Seinfeld on yeah. for them. Oh, oh that's great. great! Especially since it came to Hulu, that because it just keeps going, that's it. Maybe I think they like it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. What do you want from me? Tell me. Money? You want money? <laughs> My name is David Oliver and I live in Dumont, New Jersey. My wife and I met online actually. I noticed that she had Seinfeld in her profile and it was kind of like an instant icebreaker. Uh. <laughs> Trivia AD started with pretty much myself and uh, now we have about 25 people who all help facilitate the events and write questions and host and uh, it's become a, a very, very tight family. My name is Jay. My father's first name is Alexander. So my full name is Jason Alexander Lopez. I've had a lot of other paranormal stuff happen to me. You're a little paranormal. My girlfriend actually, when we first started dating, she thought it was a joke. She saw my full name on Facebook and she's like, why are you doing this? Are you that big of a fan of Seinfeld? So in her phone, she named me George Costanza. George! George Costanza! I, I like to go a little off the beaten track. It's a 1 18th scale of what Frank Costanza uses every year on Festivus. Festivus is back! I'll get the pole out of the crawl space! You know, the day job pays for the bills, but the night job is really what gets my passion going, and that's hosting trivias all over the place in New York City. 
I want to throw a shout out if I can, just to um, Signcast. They are somewhat responsible for getting me like, back into the Seinfeld world. So anyone who's a Seinfeld fan would really enjoy listening to that podcast. It's great. Hello and welcome to Signcast, a retrospective on all 180 episodes of Seinfeld. My name is Vinny. My name's Matt. We just passed a million downloads, actually. The show's been off the air for 22 years, and the fact that people would actually care about <laughs> hearing two guys blather on and on and on about it, it's just, it blows my mind. We also have a feature on our show, which I'm very proud of, it's called The Double Dipper. Double Dipped? What, what, what are you talking about? And a Double Dipper is when an actor has been on Seinfeld, but played two completely separate roles. A good example of that is Marlene, George's ex-girlfriend in The Ex-Girlfriend. She comes back as Kelly and uh, I think Waitress at Monks. Yes, she was in season six again. You know, short hair, completely different. You wouldn't recognize her. And it happens quite often. Mm -hmm. We've, you know, covered about 64 episodes and I think we've had at least 30 double dippers so far. So we go into the minutia <laughs> and we break this thing down to every joke, to every little detail. What's know? Jerry's ATM code? Oh, Jarrell. <laughs> Superman's father in crypto. Of course. There's so many things you could touch on and make a trivia question, which Matt actually does. I've been hosting Seinfeld trivia events in New York City for years now. I can say without a doubt that the Summer of George trivia event is going to be our biggest trivia event yet. I'll go. Okay. That's what our outfits are for. Trivia. We're gonna have the best and the brightest come to see if they can win. We get a lot of new people now, a lot of younger folks who are coming out for Seinfeld trivia, probably because Seinfeld's on Hulu. It's not it's not a generation thing, it's not an age thing, it's just funny. Oh, this is funny? I'm being funny? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> George, is this funny? It's funny. It's just one of those family pastimes that after dinner we sat and watched Seinfeld. I feel like it's a part of my childhood. I've been watching it for so long. It's, it's ingrained in me. So just to be around a bunch of people when we started going to trivia who just identified with the show the way we did and knew so much useless information yeah. about it, like us, was really nice. You see, that's the kind of society I want to live in. <laughs> The people at the events, at the trivia events, it's just like New York City. It's a melting pot. You really get a, a slice of everybody. Like, things happen in New York, and you're like, oh, that happened to me. Being from New York and being a New Yorker, you just kind of watch it, and you're like, yeah, that's that's what it is, and, and that's exactly how I would handle that situation. And thank God for these people who put it on television so I can watch it a thousand times. There's the episode when they're on the subway, and that was always my impression of New York. I've heard an argument that you have to be from New York to get that humor, and I am definitely a testament to that just not being true at all. The Monk's Coffee Shop, which is based off of Tom's restaurant up uh, on the Upper West Side. It's so cool to see the sign that they show on every episode. I do really like this coffee shop. Uh, black and white? Black and white cookie. Well, I was going by a bakery today, and you see that black and white cookie, and it automatically thinks Seinfeld. Because of this show, the black and white cookie is my favorite dessert to get. If people would only look to the cookie, all our problems would be solved. But if you're from New York and you don't find Seinfeld funny, I, there's no hope. Yeah, for I don't you. know. I don't, <laughs> I don't trust you. <laughs> it's like you learn about the place you're living watching a show that's about nothing. <laughs> See, this should be the show. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's always the biggest thing we argue about is the team name. We're gonna go with feels like an Arby's night. That's our, that's our, team, our team name. name is Feels Like an Arby's Night. <laughs> right, we're gonna go with, uh, <laughs> you've got my name, you got my address, that's enough. I, I, love, uh, I like Pulp Can Move, baby. Pulp couldn't make it across the table. Pulp Can Move, baby! We are Team Urban Sombrero. Our team name is Snoopy and Prickly Pete. Uh, the Close Talkers. So many great lines, I so know. many great things. What do we what do we come up with? Feeling a little nervous, but really good, really excited to be here. We love playing. I got my Elaine big salad right here. Actually, when I walked in, I'm like, quick, get upstairs so people know who I'm dressed as. I love Elaine. Oh. Okay. I mean, I love every character on the show, but I love how, in, in her own way, she's kind of like a woman's rights activist. She is, she is my spirit animal. Well, she hates stupid people just like I do. She was my female role model growing up, like, hardcore. Hey, me talking? So one of them says get, and then the other one says out. They're small. It's more of just like for me. It's an empowering thing. Get out! Get out! Get out! 
you doofus! I'm a woman's health teacher, so I love bringing up Elaine as an example, talking about birth control. Do so you think you're sponge worthy? Yes, I think I'm sponge worthy. I think I'm very sponge worthy. Abortion rights and all that, I kind of identify with her there. It's like, what would Elaine do? It's kind of my motto. What? The dingo ate your baby. <laughs> First round is pretty general for your, you know, casual fan. Second round are quotes. It gets a little bit harder, but that's a lot more fun. You turn it up more and more. By the time we get to the fifth round, it's blazing. We're on fire. And then in the sixth round, our lightning round will be a complete inferno. I want you to relax and have fun, because you're a fun guy. All right, let's do it, huh? Here we go, round one. 105 points tonight. And he's like, you just can't like, have yeah, fun. Let's go you can't and have a nice go. time. Like, Nearly 100 questions. He tells me I'm not allowed to go anywhere because I have to study. Like you have to study. <laughs> Monday is the big test. Huh? <laughs> Good luck. Don't need it. <laughs> Number one. It's a behemoth. Jerry states that Newman is a mystery wrapped in what? He's a mystery wrapped in a Twinkie. <laughs> Two points for this next question. Everybody feeling good, confident? Everyone that goes, they think they're the genius. I know I'm gonna win. <laughs> I keep saying that and then I get really nervous. Frank is upset because Estelle put what kind of fruit in the jello? Why'd you put the bananas in there? George likes the bananas! So let him have bananas on the side! All right, please! Is that round too hard? Oh, uh, who said yes? I'm hoping for top three. That was loud, but <laughs> top three. Well, we like to kind of like turn up the heat each round. What number? Slash letter combination, does Jerry sink Elaine's battleship with? E5. Very close. B6. I'm very overwhelmed at the moment. Oh, this is too tough, isn't it? We're not gonna win. <laughs> well, we come to win. Yeah. Hey, my first time here, it's a little overwhelming. Yeah, I said let's do our best, and he said that's a loser's answer. Number four is a tough one. Think about it for a second. Where did Kramer see the sunrise after partying? Canelli's? No. Like, typically you'll have all 30 teams run at once, about third fall behind, then another third fall behind. What is George's apartment number? 609. Nice try. <laughs> Alright guys, how's everybody feeling? I don't think we're gonna win. Because it's a big night and we never really win when it's a big night. And then by the time you get to the last round, it's really neck and neck with a couple of teams. So without further ado, let's get into this from the worst to the best. With 29 points, Pigman, baby, Pigman. 34 points, the moops. I honestly, I've never been around uh, this many people who know that much about Seinfeld. And it's awesome. But very humbling. Very humbling. 59 points going to the Close Talkers. Then we have 61 points going to Snoopy and Prickly Pete. It was a million times harder than last time. <laughs> I'll say yeah. that. Mind you, there were 105 possible points. If you win this thing, you're definitely one of the biggest Seinfeld fans out there. And our big winners tonight of Seinfeld Trivia, The Summer of George, with 96 points. You got my name, you got my address, that's enough. Where are you guys? Congratulations, guys. I am so happy that I'm married to this woman and have access to her dementia. <laughs> God, I've never felt so alive. As long as I didn't come in dead, dead last, yeah. And uh, we lost two people who really knew, you know, what they were doing. That's fine. So. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Congratulations. I will never stop watching Seinfeld. Because apparently there's so much more I can know about it. I think it's brought a lot of people together from all around the world. And you can't say that for most TV shows, but with Seinfeld, it'll always be funny. Success. All around. I don't know if I, I, don't know if I want to say the biggest fan. I mean, there's, there's definitely people who I don't know, actually, maybe. <laughs> Are we the world's biggest Seinfeld fans? I'm sure they're bigger Seinfeld fans, <laughs> but we're, we're up there. <laughs> and 
those who don't can go to hell. <laughs> In the shower head, what three terms does Peter May use to describe opium? <laughs> That's right, Elaine. White Lotus. Yum yum. Shanghai Sally. In the stakeout, what is the third name in the law firm that Vanessa works for? So you're a lawyer. Sagman Bennett Robbins Oppenheim and Tap. Sagman Bennett Robbins Oppenheim and Tap. Sagman Bennett Robbins Oppenheim and Tap. Where did Elaine suggest they eat instead of waiting for a table at the Chinese restaurant? I say we leave now, we go to Sky Burger, and we scarf them down. I'm not going to Sky Burger. Jackie Childs says that not allowing outside coffee into movie theaters is an infringement on Kramer's constitutional rights. What three words does he use to describe this? It's outrageous, egregious, preposterous. <laughs> Definitely preposterous. <laughs> oh, and by the way, they're real and they're spectacular. <laughs>